welcome back this is e253c and this will be lecture 7 we have been discussing about the various instructions of 8085 microprocessor we have already discussed some of the uh, some of the main some of the important instructions like move move immediate for example move ca move immediate anything move immediate b 23 or we have also studied about add we have uh, studied about add b or add image 23h we have also studied about load from any memory location maybe 0032 memory location and storing in the memory locations sta maybe at 0045 memory location last time uh, in the last class or maybe a class before that we have uh, discussed about the various types of, of instructions these 74 different instructions are actually classified into various categories like some uh, fall into data transfer operations like move and lda move immediate some in arithmetic instructions like add and subtract some are logical in logical operations like and or zor uh, there are others also there are branching instructions for example jumps and calls we have not studied those so far and then uh, we also have um, uh, machine control instructions there is one more classification which we are going to study before discussing some other instructions that's uh, that classification is actually based on the amount of memory these instructions need to be stored inside the memory what amount of memory they need to be stored for example this instruction move ca the first instruction i have written here it will translate to a bit pattern for example to 4fh so whenever this 4fh is burned inside the memory Will be written in one byte 4f but this second instruction move image b23 this is somewhat different from the first instruction because it has an opcode part move image b and then the operand is present in the instruction itself so it will translate to bit pattern for example 0 6 and then this 2 3 2 3 h 06 means move image b and 23 means uh, immediately moving 23 into uh, register b if uh, we had some other instruction like move image b 56h this is the same instruction as here so the first part will be same it will translate to 06 but 0656h and as you can see this instruction or this instruction will need two bytes to be stored in the memory for example this instruction will be stored in two bytes in the first uh, part byte we will have the opcode 06 and in the second part second byte we will have the operand 56 this is 0001 or simply one this is two similarly there are some other instructions which need three bytes for example this instruction LDA 0032 so let me assume that the opcode for this part is 2F so this instruction will translate to 2F0032 since this is the address where from we have to load the data i have explained this instruction in the last class the inner the address can be 16 bits long so we need one byte for the opcode and two bytes for the operand here so this instruction will be stored like this 2f in one byte and in next two bytes we will have address 0032 if i had written lda 0562h then this 
may translate into 2F0562H. One thing you should remember, these uh, bit patterns, these binary bit patterns, 2F to LDA, I am assuming these things. They may be right or they may not be right and you don't have to remember it because they are always written inside the book and it's not easy to remember these things and one does not need to remember these things because we are uh, uh, most of the times we are writing programs maybe in high level language or in assembly level language and we don't need to remember these bit patterns. So the instructions all these 74 instructions are actually classified into maybe in uh, what we call as one byte instructions they need only one byte to be stored in the memory and they are for example move add subtract or even complement i have no i think i have not uh, discussed complement instruction it complement what it uh, actually does it complements the contents of accumulator for example if this instruction in, is executed by the processor if the accumulator has some value like 1001001 it will all the bits will be complemented that means after the execution of this instruction accumulator will have 01101110 some other instructions or two byte instructions usually those instructions where the operand is itself present inside them inside the instruction in the instruction there are two byte instructions like move immediate accumulator 32h add immediate 56H and then there are also three byte instruction three byte instruction which take three bytes there are usually those instructions where the operand is actually memory for example load LDA and then we have a memory 2050H load something in the accumulator from the memory location 2050 store the contents of accumulator in some memory location maybe 3000h so this is a three byte instruction it will take three bytes so i think we should move on to discuss some other instructions Or let me show you a brief program how these instructions are stored inside uh, inside the memory but I think let's do that after we discuss some other instructions so let's come to branch instructions branch operations branching operations Branching operations are usually of two types. We may have uh, we may have loops to run, or we may have subroutines. What are loops? For example, I have a program code 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 different lines of instruction 12 different instructions and there are three particular instructions which i need to run 10 times so what i do i put them inside a loop you you may have seen these things in c language we use for loop we, we use while loop and other loops also so we put these instructions inside a loop so Whenever we execute this instruction, we jump again to the execution of this instruction and we execute these three instructions a particular number of times. A group of instructions is executed more than once using loops. These loops. Or in case of subroutines, what we does, what we do, we have a separate program or a separate piece of code which
we have a separate piece of uh, code a few instructions which actually we need to execute uh, multiple times they do a special function and we and at, uh, when we need to do that function we call this code and in uh, high level language we call uh, this group of instructions as a function we call them using calling uh, convections in C and here we call this piece of code as subroutine and they may be called and both of these things and then there is another thing uh, we use it uh, we use it, uh, sometimes we have to make decision do we need to execute this these six instruction or do we execute do we want to execute these six instruction these five instruction another group of instruction do we want to execute one group of instructions or do we ex want to execute another group of instructions like we uh, did in c for example if using if uh, and other statements making decisions depending upon some value we made a decision whether we want to execute this group of instructions or that group of instructions so basically normally in a program we may not always have the sequential execution of instructions sometimes we need to go out of sequence that, that may be in case of loops one thing that may be whenever we call functions because functions are written somewhere else or same may be case when we have to make some decision so in these cases we usually go out of sequence to execute some instructions and these operations are known as branching operations in 8085 processor we have two types of branching we have jumps and we have call instructions call instruction you use it to call subroutines to execute a different piece of code written somewhere else and jumps are usually used to go out of sequence so let's first discuss this jump jumps may be in 8085 jumps may be unconditional or they may be conditional What do we mean by conditional and unconditional jumps? As the name suggests, unconditional jumps are those jumps which don't check any condition. They don't check any condition. They jump. Regardless of anything, they jump. Whenever we uh, reach to that instruction, when, uh, whenever that instruction is executed, the, the execution will jump automatically to some other location to the execution of some other instruction without checking any condition but that is not the case in conditional jumps in conditional jumps some condition we will see what these conditions may be in few minutes some conditions may be checked and depending upon if that condition is met the execution will jump to some other location the program execution will jump to some other location and if the condition is not jump it will follow the uh, normal uh, order The very basic unconditional jump in 8085 is jump jmp we write the opcode jmp and give it some address for example i may give it 2000 so whenever this instruction is fetched by the processor and executed it will forcibly jump to the memory location 2000 h that means the next instruction will be executed whatever is written in 2000H. And what does that mean? That actually means that in this case the program counter which actually holds the address of the next instruction to be executed will not auto increment itself as you may have seen in the last few lectures but a forcibly some number that is 2000H in this case will be put in the program counter. And the program counter will fetch the next instruction from this memory location. Let me do an example here. For example, I have a small program. Let me start with, for example, Mm -hmm. 
let me start with more image it more image it accumulator 04h the next instruction is more image it b 04h and then maybe the next instruction is adding the contents of accumulator to register b and store the result in accumulator let me have these three instructions when i write these three instructions the programmer writes these three instructions in assembly language but since our processor they don't understand assembly language we need an assembler to change it into binary language to into hex codes into bit patterns zeros and ones so each instruction will be changed and then put in memory so let's assume here that the opcode for move image a is this is a two byte instruction so the total opcode will be two bytes move image a let's assume its opcode is for example 03 the total opcode will be 0304H and then move image B for example here the opcode is 0604H and then add B this one byte in instruction and its opcode is for example 80H again I will say these opcodes may not be the correct ones for 8085 microprocessor they change with every processor what are the correct opcodes you may find them in the book but here I am just illustrating that these things will change into binary bit patterns and these bit patterns will actually be burnt will actually be put in the memory so let me have my memory here Okay, that's fine all the way to this is zero 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 and that's zero 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 one or simply I may write one because one and zero 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 one is same thing three four five six seven eight a b c d e f then um, one zero one f up to f f f f is that okay so when i'll, I'll try to write this program inside this memory it will translate to zero three here zero four here zero six here this will take two bytes the first instruction will take two bytes first two bytes the second instruction will also take two bytes 06 and 04 and the third instruction will only take one byte 80 and then this memory i have attached to my microprocessor and inside the microprocessor i have i have an ALU I have uh, different um, registers like accumulator this 8-bit register I have register B I have my flags and other general purpose registers I also have stack I also have program counter that's a 16-bit register there are other registers also there's also some other registers as we have discussed previously like instruction decoder instruction decoder all right let me write it here. and then there is control unit also instruction decoder instruction decoder this alu so by default and this uh, processor uh, this memory is attached to my processor using uh, various 
address lines 16 different address lines and eight of those also uh, are meant for data transfer so these are address and data address and data bus so whenever i turn on my processor what will happen all these rest uh, inside the program inside the processor will have a default value and in most cases that's zero 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 this also have, will have a zero value but it's a 16-bit number so we will show it like zero 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 i think that's okay so what will happen the program counter is that register which actually holds the data which actually holds the address of the next inner string to be executed since it has 0000, 000 so what it will do it will put that 0000, 000 on address bus and the first memory location will be selected its contents will be transferred and put into the instruction decoder 03 and it will decode it after decoding it will know that 03 pretends to moving some data immediately to accumulator and it will also come to know that the that data is present in the next memory location so program counter meanwhile program counter will auto increment itself point to the me next memory location fetch that data 04 and put that data into accumulator the processor will put that data in the accumulator 04 Similarly, the next instruction will be executed. Uh, program counter will auto increment itself to 02. It will fetch this 06, which is opcode for immediately moving some data to B. So uh, the next, uh, and then program counter will also, uh, meanwhile, program counter will auto increment itself. The data for the next instruction will be fetched that is 04 and put, and put in the register. 04 that's okay meanwhile the flag register will auto uh, uh, there will be some change in it we are not concerned with that right now but there will be some change when we move some data in 4 or when, when actually we will add contents of b to a there will be some change but we are not concerned with flags this time so when the third instruction will be executed, this will again auto increment itself and it will have a value of maybe four. And this opcode will be patched. This opcode will be put uh, decoded here in the instruction decoder and it will come to know that I have to add the contents of accumulator to the contents of accumulate uh, to the contents of register B and store the value in accumulator. So in a session decoder, will uh, send this to uh, the control timing and control unit that will actually initiate the necessary control signals that will tell the uh, arithmetic logic unit to get the contents from a and the contents from b add them and put the result back in accumulate so four and four will be added and the con result that is eight will be put in accumulator so, ac so accumulator will get eight and automatically some maybe some uh, of the bits inside the flag register will change here but we are not concerned with that right now after that program counter will auto increment itself 0 5 there is no uh, instruction here written here that means nothing more will happen actually there will be some machine uh, instruction uh, that will tell the program counter that there is no further instruction so that's a separate thing so here we are these three instructions are perfectly fine whenever we turn on the processor they are executed one by one and i have just shown you how they are executed now maybe in my program there's a fourth instruction for example i have a jump so what will happen here if i will jump for example I uh, I have a jump and that jump I'm giving an address of 0004H so this also will have some opcode JMP maybe that is 2E for example anything can have 
any 8 bit bit pattern a particular 8 bit bit pattern in fact that will be given by the manufacturer of the 8085 and i am assuming here that's 2e 2e and then there will be address is this is a 3 byte instruction one byte will be taken by the opcode and two bytes by the operand here the operand here is address 0004 so this will be written here 2e 0004 I think that's also fine till now so if I have written this program inside the memory and I want to execute this program what will happen the first three instructions will be executed as such as I have already explained after that when the program counter increments itself to 0, 05 Zero 05 so it will find it will this memory location will be selected and it will find some new number there some new bit pattern there 2e that will be that will be fetched put in the in instruction decoder 2e and will be decoded and it will know the processor will know that i have to jump somewhere and meanwhile the program counter will increment itself to 06 the processor will know that this is the data this is the address ex actually where i have to jump it will get this zero zero and put inside the processor in some register maybe and then the next um, byte of the address also zero four this will again increment itself this will by now this has become as zero 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 seven So when this instruction jump 0004 will be executed, what will happen? It has to jump to the memory location 0004, that is this memory location. And what actually that jumping means, that means the next instruction that needs to be executed, that will be executed by the processor is something that is written in 0004. So the processor will forcibly put this address 0004 in the program counter. So program counter will this time not auto increment itself to 0008 but will actually for will be actually forcibly fed a value that is 0004 and in the next cycle what will happen the program counter is pointing again to 0004 the data written inside 00 will be fetched that is ath will be fetched here oh sorry ATH will be fetched here so our processor will execute this ATH again and it will know that I have to add the contents of ATH pertains to adding the contents of register B to the contents of accumulator and storing the re result in accumulator so it will add the contents of accumulator which is 4 to the contents of accumulator which is now 8 8 plus 4 means 12 that is C in hexadecimal so our accumulator will get a value 0c and what will happen after that our program counter will again auto increment itself it will get a value 0005 it will point to this and again that this jump in a section will be executed that means the program counter will again be pointing to 0004 that's here that means it will be again in a, executing this instruction that is uh, this instruction sorry that is adding the contents of b to the contents of accumulator and storing the result in the accumulator and this time when this instruction will be executed see that 12 plus 4 is 16 16 in hexadecimal is 10 so our accumulator will have a value 10 and this process will repeat indefinitely infinite number of times so this program i discuss here to illustrate how an unconditional jump works or how a jump works so there is one more thing before we wind up this lecture i want to discuss most of the times when we write big programs we can't we can't uh, keep track of this address exactly what is the function of jump 
what is the function of jump actually the function of jump is to forcibly move the execution to a particular instruction and how we are actually uh, implementing that we are calculating the address of that instruction and putting that instruction with our jump instruction but sometimes this address calculation may not be easy for a programmer it may not be easy so what we do or what we can do what's an alternative we can write this same program something like this move immediate accumulator 04h move immediate b 04h add b first three instructions are same add, add b and then we have to jump jmp why do we have to jump we have to jump this instruction and in the previous case here we have written the address of this instruction that actually will be the address when this program is burnt inside the memory but without calculating the address we can label this instruction for example i can give any name to this instruction and the name is given like this a b c or any other name maybe x y z or a b d any name and when i say jump i will say jump to this instruction by using this label jump to a b c so this program and this program is same the execution will be same the difference is here only in writing the program whenever this will be changed by the assembler to the opcodes and to the binary uh, numbers and uh, burnt inside the, um, inside the memory that will be same this will be automatically changed to the memory location of add b to the address of add b but to make the life easier for the programmer we can use these labels we call these labels and we can label any uh, any instruction inside a program we can label this also for example xyz we can label this also xyz name of the label and colon we can label any instruction we can label this also uh, maybe a a a so if i am saying jump abc it will jump to this label to the instruction having this label or similarly maybe in another program i can uh, write something like this move image eight a zero six h add or before i can say add image eight twenty three so I am moving 06 to accumulator and then I am adding 23H to accumulator to the contents of accumulator and then I can say something like this for example jump XYZ and I can label this very instruction XYZ so what will this program do this program will be executed this instruction will be executed fine number six will be moved uh, to accumulator and then this instruction will be executed 23 hex will be added to six and the result will be stored in the accumulator and then this instruction will be executed what does that mean that means the processor will keep on jumping to this instruction and this instruction will keep on executing and jumping to itself uh, executing and jumping to itself this process will repeat repeat infinite number of times so that's for unconditional jump we also have conditional jumps will uh, that check actually the condition of certain bits and usually the conditions they check are flag bits we may discuss conditional jumps and also write some programs using conditional jumps and using all the instructions we have studied so far in the next lecture thank you